Hello friends, welcome to another video from Carolina's Cottage. This is Johnny. I have four things to show you today. A couple of them are decoupage items and a couple of them we're going to use air dry clay and molds to create a very different look. Let's get started with the video. This piece started out as a very plain, unfinished piece of wood, and I think this probably came from Hobby Lobby, but we're gonna use a couple of techniques to give it a shabby chic look. I'm doing something a little different from what I usually do here. Typically, I will stain the piece um, or maybe paint a dark color underneath because I'm going to distress this. But on this piece, I want it to have a really soft, uh, neutral look. So I'm using a beige color here. This is a folk art matte finish. It's a, an acrylic paint and it's in the um, color linen toile. I'm using an old candlestick and I'm going to apply this wax around the edges and then in a few random spots on the surface of the frame. When I come back with an ivory colored paint that will be a little bit lighter than this, this will allow me to use a light sandpaper to distress the frame later, and it will give it a more weathered look than just using sandpaper without the wax underneath the paint. And it even gives a, a, a more weathered look than, than doing a wet distress would do. And I'll talk a little bit more about paint in a few minutes. This will be the first time that I've used rice paper to decoupage, and I was so excited to use it. I love this pattern. It's called Creamy Rose, and I ordered this from Decoupage Central. I am drawing this out on the rice paper to see where the image fits best inside this frame, and here's the look created by using wax between the two coats. I will apply a decoupage medium to the cardboard that was with the frame. And then uh, once I get the piece of uh, rice paper on there, I'll put another kind of a thin coat over the rice paper, but it's much easier to work with than a napkin. The next step for making this frame have a shabby chic look is to use some uh, molds. These molds are just something I got from Amazon and they will be linked on my Amazon page below, but I used hot glue in the mold to create these because I knew they were going on a flat surface. I'm painting these before I glue them on the frame because I did not want to mess up my finish that I had completed on the frame. And I'm just using some wood glue to attach it to the frame. Here's the result, and I will show a before and after of all of these projects at the end of the video. The next piece I'll be working on was in pretty bad shape. It had a lot of scratches on it, and the top pieces had actually separated from the bottom piece. So I sanded these down. I gave them a base coat of Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream and I'm going to be decoupaging the front side and painting and stamping the back side. If you are enjoying this video so far, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps me get my videos out to more viewers. YouTube is a funny business. It's all about the number of views, the number of likes, and the number of comments. So that's why we all ask uh, all of you to like, comment, subscribe. It really helps get us noticed by YouTube analytics. What I'm continuing to do here on the decoupage paper is to draw a, a light outline around the shape of these pieces that I'll be decoupaging. 
also want to give a shout out to Myra. Her channel is Farm Fresh Designs 59. I will link one of her recent videos below and I encourage you to check out her site if you haven't already. But I also know that a lot of Myra's subscribers are following my site now and viewing my videos because Myra has encouraged them to do so. Myra's been such a blessing and a good friend lately, kind of giving me the ropes uh, to YouTube and incorporating some of the Facebook groups uh, into this as well. And I think with YouTube, it really does take a village to be successful, to figure out all the technical aspects and incorporate the social media platforms. And so uh, Myra's been very uh, open and generous about sharing all of her knowledge. So I appreciate that uh, from Farm Fresh Designs 59. And while I'm at it, I'll mention another channel. Lisa with Our Shabby Cottage had kind of helped Myra with her channel early on, uh, according to Myra. And uh, so I want to call out Lisa's channel at Our Shabby Cottage as well. I, I would imagine that many of you are already watching her videos if, and have been uh, following her, but I will link one of her videos down below as well. I've been watching her for quite some time and she's a very uh, generous person as well. I'm putting a generous coat of moss green paint on the back of these pieces and then I will use Iron Orchid Design stamps to give them a different look than uh, the decoupage I have on the front. And while we're talking about paint for a minute, I would just like to say that I am establishing a partnership with a paint company called Paint Couture. I will be using their products in future videos, including some decoupage papers. I will go ahead and put my affiliate link in the description below. Using that affiliate link will allow you to get a discount and I will be making recommendations and suggestions and providing techniques on the use of those products in future videos. So stay tuned for all of that. The stamps that I'm using above are from Iron Orchid Designs New Spring 2024 set called Veranda. And there's a lot of versatility with this one. Uh, the roses that I'm using on the back of this piece are from the center of that oval design that you see to my left there. And I've already found so many uses for these stamps. What I'm pulling uh, out here is my old favorite, the Toile Roses set from Iron Orchid Designs. And I just love filling in the empty spaces with some of the pieces from that set. I'm also making sure to wrap the stamp around the edges of this piece. After I finished stamping the upper piece of this, as you recall, this had broken off, um, then I'm going to reattach it using the dowel that came with it and using a little wood glue to secure that. Here's the transformed shabby chic piece, front and back. The next piece was a thrifted item. It has a metallic green and blue finish, and I'm going to transform it into something a little more shabby chic. 
I'll be using a couple of coats of chalk paint. In this case, it's going to be Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. And once that is dry, I'll use air dry clay to create embellishments for this piece. I'm starting with a new package of air dry clay, but I think this has been sitting in my supplies for a while, so it has dried a little. I'm putting cornstarch in the mold to help the air dry clay release from the mold a little easier. These molds happen to be uh, Prima Redesign molds, and I will link the name of this mold in the description below. I'm using wood glue to attach these to the piece and because I'm using air dry clay which is quite flexible I will be able to curve it around the shape of this piece as well as manipulate it to give the effect of flourishes that I want this to have. I will take a few minutes to make sure the piece of clay is really sticking to uh, this bird. Once I make sure of that, I'll go around the edges of the piece of clay to try and tuck in those edges and prevent gaps from forming there. The moisture will begin immediately evaporating from this clay. So what I'm going to do to prevent some of the cracking is to cover the clay with chalk paint. There will be a small amount of cracking in this anyways because as it dries it's going to shrink a little bit and possibly pull away from the, um, from the piece that it's glued to. but. The best remedy for that is to just apply another liberal coat of chalk paint and that will help cover some of those cracks. I will let this dry overnight and as you can see here, there has been a little cracking overnight as this completely dried. I'm going to give this piece a few finishing touches to give her a little personality. I'll use black paint to completely fill the eyeball. And then I'll come back with a very thin line of light blue paint to give a highlight in the bottom portion of the eye. And then the final highlight will be just a small dot of white paint in the upper portion of her eyes.
taken her outside to give her a spray clear coat to finish. Next up is this chubby little guy. It's going to take some thought to decide how he needs to look to fit his shape and his personality. a couple of stamps from the IOD crockery set to give him a French look. I'm going to add a pastel color and then I'll also be giving him a face as well. Just like the bird I painted previously, I'm giving a thin line of light blue paint toward the, or in the lower section of the eye, and then a small white dot in the upper section of the eye to give it a highlight and to help those eyes look round. And here he is waiting outside for his clear coat to finish him up. And here's a quick look at everything before and after. We changed this simple piece into a really cute, shabby chic creation. This farmhouse style piece also got a shabby chic look. I added shabby chic features to this bird using air dry clay. And I think I simplified this little guy enough so that his personality shines through. Click on the pop-up at the end to watch more of my videos. Please give this a thumbs up if you haven't already. Also remember to check out the other YouTube channels that I've linked below. Thank you for watching today and I will see you in the next video.